Good morning creators and welcome to another UEFN tutorial. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to create cinematic sequences using the cinematic sequence device. First, you're going to open up your content drawer. Under Fortnite, under devices, you're going to find the cinematic sequence device. You're going to place it in. And under details, you're going to find your details. For example, the sequence, you're going to open up this box and create a new level sequence. Just going to use the default name and I'm going to double click to open it. Next, I am going to, you'll notice it's empty at first, but I'm going to track the box on the screen. I'm going to select that, track, activate the sequencer, and I'm going to add the box. That next, I want to track transform. So, you'll notice it has scale, rotation, and location. So, for example, if I want to change the X scale. I'm going to add a key there and a key over here. And this is the first key. When I select the second key, I can edit it. So if I want to change the X, I can change it. And you'll notice in the sequence, it scales over time. If I want to change the location, it's pretty easy. Just add an X key. And on this last frame, add another X key. move it over and you'll notice it moves in the game actually quite smoothly so that's how you move a prop using the cinematic sequence and this can be used live in game so if you want to use that instead of the prop mover I recommend it uh, next you're going to add a camera so first you're going to create a new camera and under the camera component, you can change the focal length, for example, which is kind of your zoom, as well as your location. So you can transform it as well. Scale is not going to really do anything to the cameras, um, but your rotation and location will. So let's set this as our default focal length. We're going to add a key here and a key over here. Select our key. If I want to slowly zoom in, that's how we do that. So by default, these transitions are going to be cubic, which means it kind of like eases in and then eases out. But you can change that by right clicking on a key. And you'll see you have these options like linear and constant. Linear is going to go straight from one to the other. So linear is a straight line uh, if you are familiar with math. So we can do linear and you'll notice the zoom is going to be very straight. It's not going to be smooth and dot at all. Just can go straight into it. It's even. There is no slow slowing of the rate or anything. So if you want to do linear, that's great. But in general, I'm going to use cubic because I like the smooth transitions. Of course, you can move your camera as well. And to do that, you can open up your location. And then add a keyframe for X, for example. And you'll notice. When you select this, you can move it around. I want to move it forward, so I'm going to do that. Open up zero. I'm going to move Y as well. So I'm going to go over here, create a key at Y, and I'm going to move it to the right a bit. So you'll notice the camera moves as well. But I also want it to follow the rotation. So I'm going to add a rotation node as well. You'll see roll does this weird sideways roll effect, pitch goes up and down, and yaw goes side to side. So I'm going to edit yaw. I'm going to add one at zero. And let's say I accidentally create a keyframe here. I can either delete it using backspace, or I can move it like this to the desired location. And so once that's selected, I can move the yaw. And I notice I'm not really looking at the box, so I might want to add a pitch node just so that I can peer down at the box. So I'm going to select my pitch and look down. I also want to point out I, I made a mistake with the yaw. No, I didn't. Never mind. I'm good. Uh, I just accidentally added a scale. So it's currently following the box, which is great. 
Um, so that's how you change the camera location and movement, as well as focus. So really, the cinematic sequences are really customizable and they're really fun to work with. Um, you can always add additional things like in track, we have the time dilation track, which is essentially used for slow-mo and fast forwards. So what you can do is create a key here and a key over here. And you'll notice if I create a key over here, select it and then decrease the speed or increase the speed, it changes the speed of the game. So if I slow it down a lot, you'll see in our sequence, the frames go slower and slower because it's in slow-mo. It's a really unique tool to create slow motion for games like, you know, Super Hot. I think that's the name of the game. Um, yeah, those kinds of games you can create with the time dil dilation track. Next, you are going to create a fade track. And the cool thing about fade is it can make easy transitions. Um, for example, if you create a key here and a key at the end, select that key and increase the fade. It only goes up to one, so don't go beyond that or else you're gonna experience some issues. You'll notice it fades over time. Now let's say you're not satisfied with how it fades. You want it to be smoother or go at a different rate. You can open up the curve editor and it basically shows the transition. Um, for example, if you select this, you can change how it transitions. So it's gonna be more exponential in this way, or it could be rounded out like this. Um, of course, you can move the keys around and you can move it up and down just so that it fades in a different way. And of course, you want to save it whenever you change something. So the curve editor is an easy way to make really precise changes within your keys uh, without having to like go through the bar and kind of like brute force it. You can use more precise values uh, and it's just generally easier to use. Um, it's just less convenient to open up, I guess. So there are, of course, op other options like subsequences, which can combine sequences into one. Um, you can add more shots. So this is a shot right here, uh, which is, you know, of course, this camera shot. Uh, if you want to do another shot track, you can connect it to a different camera and it will record from that direction um, or whatever sequence you add there. Um, of course, you can add more actors. Really, any kind of actor can be used. So even like devices, um, more props, buildings if you are feeling really ambitious, um, but you gotta make sure you test it in game or otherwise you might risk breaking the game. Uh, of course, you can add audio tracks and some other advanced features, which currently I don't really see the point in explaining, um, but I recommend exper experimenting around with this because it's fairly useful. So to use the cinematic sequence device in game, you're going to open it up and you'll see you have some options like looping, autoplay, etc. Um, I want to make it trigger, so I'm going to do play function when receiving from a trigger. And I can go ahead and start the game and you'll see when I step on the trigger, the cinematic sequence will start. It's very intuitive, it's very easy to work with. And thankfully, this sequence is not bugged. Though I will say I want to get rid of my uh, my HUD, so make sure your HUD is disabled when uh, when you're doing a sequence. You can disable the HUD using the HUD device, of course, HUD management device, whatever it's called. Um, but in general, that's how you create a cinematic sequence in Fortnite. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, please consider subscribing, leaving a like, and I hope you all have an amazing day.